How's it going everybody? In this video, we're going to continue our option B deep dive, where in the previous video we took a look at the VRF variation and it took us a while to get everything up and running. The fortunate part about it is I've gone ahead and I've actually deleted the VRF. So I've removed the edges families from the VRFs. So the VRFs themselves are still there. If we wanted to re-add them, we could, but I'm not gonna do that right now. What I will be focusing on is the aspect of the next version of option B, or variation I should say, of option B, which is gonna be the route reflector design. So up to this point, we've taken a look at the VRF variation, um, and most people are familiar with the route target filter variation. I'm gonna focus in this video on the route reflector variation and how that will come into play. So the idea and logic to this is actually very, very simple. The way that normally this will work is you'll have a situation where you'll have this guy here and this guy here will form a, uh, a connection via VPNV4 and VPNV6. Same thing with XR11. What's gonna end up happening is this is the route reflector right here and these guys are both clients of the route reflector. So whenever CSR6 or XRV12 responds or uh, advertises a prefix to uh, CSR5 or CSR or XR11, they're going to receive that and then um, assuming that they have VRFs configured, they'll learn those routes and then being clients, they'll reflect them up to the upstream neighbor. Now because EBGP is in play here, they're going to receive them and then send them up to the route reflector. The route reflector will then propagate that down to the other autonomous system boundary router, the, the other ASBR. Well, if we remove the VRF from the config and we still have this EBGP peering, if we remove the VRFs, no routes will be learned. So what we have to do is configure this guy to be a route reflector now. So this will be a route reflector, this will be a route reflector, and so will CS XRV11 and XRV12. And then what we'll do is we'll configure the peering to route reflector one, he will be now a client of this guy and a client of this guy, XR11. So by doing that, both ASBRs will then send their information up to route reflector one. Because it's a route reflector, there is no filtering. So all traffic is received. We'll go through and do that, get that working. Now a lot of the other cap cap uh, capabilities, like the VRF, uh, VRF importation on the PE routers, the static routes on the XRV or the iOS XR to do the VPNV4 peerings and VPNV6 peerings to do the LDP labeling. All that stuff still is in play. That does not go away. The only thing that we're doing is changing how the ASBR behaves. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this configured. So on CSR1, if we do, I'm sorry, on CSR5, for example, here, we do a show BGP VPNV4 unicast all. We're not learning any prefixes. I'm gonna go to global config, do show run section BGP, and I'm gonna look at my peering config to um, this particular situation here with VPNV4. I'll type in router BGP1, address family VPNV4, I'll type in neighbor of 1.0.0.101, and I'll say route reflector client. Okay, now I'm gonna do that and then you're gonna see a whole bunch of routes that are gonna get learned now that weren't there before. So do show BGP, VPNV4, unicast, all. Guess what, we're learning a bunch of routes now. Let me go do the same thing on XR11. Same concept. So we're gonna type in router BGP1, type in neighbor of 1.0.0.101, Address family, VPNV4, unicast, and route reflector client. I'm gonna go ahead and commit that. So now what's gonna end up happening, if we look at CSR6, you'll notice that on him, show BGP, VPNV4, unicast, all, we haven't learned any routes. So what we're gonna have to do is go to router BGP2, neighbor, or I'm sorry, address family, IP, or VPN, before unicast, type in neighbor of 2.0.0.20 route reflector client. 
And so we're going to be able to receive all those routes. And we're going to go as soon as the peering comes back online, because right now the peering just went down. So the peering is back up now. And if we do show BGP, VPN before, unicast, all, we're, we should be receiving stuff in from 8 and 16, which is exactly what you would want to have. So we're getting, uh, we're getting all that information. Now, because the fact that the eBGP peerings are up, we should have all of that squared away. And if we look at CSR5, and we look at this information here, if we look at the aspect of the config, so show run section BGP, we've configured um, 101 to be a route reflector client of ours. So we're receiving all that information. If we show BGP, VPN, V4, unicast, all summary, you'll notice that, oh, the peering is down, that's why. I was like, why am I not learning anything? Router BGP1, um, neighbor do show run section BGP. We'll go here and I'll type in no and I'll pull this shutdown command out. And we'll pull that out. So we should learn a bunch of additional information, which now we are. So you might be wondering, well, why did you have the, the neighborship turned down? I turned it down because I wanted to demonstrate in option A using uh, the VRFs that if we force the traffic through XR, static route had to come into play. I forgot about that. So we're going through all that stuff. So now if I come back over here and I hit the up arrow again, now I'm going to learn a bunch of additional prefixes which is what I would expect to see. So now that I have that in play and good to go, if I go back over here to CSR1 and I do a show BGP VPN before unicast all, I'm now learning a bunch of prefixes, which is what I want to see. If I go to router 19, for example, here, and I do a show IP route, I've learned those routes back in from 25 and from 28 respectively. So everything's working the way that I want it to in that particular case. So now, that's like the, that's the majority of the config. Let me go ahead and clear the screen. Let me go ahead and do the same thing on XR11. So on XR11, we're gonna we've done this on 11. Let's just do this on 12 now. Show run router BGP. Type in config t router BGP2 neighbor of 2.0.0.20 address family VPNv4 unicast and then route reflector client. Go ahead and commit that. You'll notice that on CSR1, if we show BGP VPN v6 unicast all, we're not receiving anything. We still have to configure the route reflector config for VPN v6 as well. So we're gonna type in the uh, address family VPN v6 neighbor of 1.0.0.101 route reflector client. So we'll give that a second. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while that finishes doing its thing, and then I will uh, configure that on CSR 6 as well. Or I'm sorry, XR 11. So I'll actually jump over here. Um, we're going to type in, hit the up arrow a couple times, and we'll do VPNV6. We'll hit the up arrow and do this command, and that will change the VPNV6 aspect as well. Go to XR 11. We're going to go to the VPNV6 address family and type in route reflector client, commit that, and then go over to XR12, do the same thing. Focus on VPNV6, route reflector client, and commit. So that makes it very, very easy to work with in, that, in those specific terms. So there we have that. So now if we go back to route CSR1, we hit the up arrow, we should be receiving a bunch of additional routes, which we are. So that means that both VPNv4 and VPNv6 are working with this specific design. And this is the route reflector variation. So if we look at router 19, and I look at the show IP route, it's still there, right? Right, it's not going away. If I do a trace route to 10.1.22.22, I'm sorry, uh, 25.25, sourcing from loopback one numerically, I should have a end-to-end -end label switch path. Now it's technically, I'm sorry, it'll be a label switch path from ingress PE to egress PE on the remote autonomous system. 
but you'll notice that I have multiple uh, LSPs. I have three of them specifically. So all that's working out for us in that particular case. So all that's working, everything looks good. If we go to the route reflector, for example, and we show BGP, VPNB4, unicast, all, we should have a lots of diversity. And that's one of the benefits here to having the diversity in play. So we're in good shape there. Now one question that is commonly uh, asked is how does this affect traffic engineering? And the, the answer to that question is traffic engineering isn't affected by how you learn routes on the ASBRs. Whether you're doing it through the VRF, through the route reflector configuration, or through the no BGP route target filter command. It doesn't make much of a difference. How you choose to forward the traffic depends on the mechanisms you throw at it. So for example, and I'm not gonna really get into the uh, how that comes into play too much, but if I was to make a modification on XR11 for any of the connections, it's going to affect all the traffic. So I'll give you a quick quick example of what I mean by this. So let's look at router 11, do show run RPL. I have an RPL here, option A, local preference. That will work. So if I was to do show run router BGP and look at the VPN v4 peering here and look at the outbound or the inbound connection. So if I was to go to, let's exit out of here, type in neighbor of 12.11.12.12, .12 address family VPN v4 unicast and type in this command right here, route policy uh, here and specify the option A local preference. It's it's not specific to option A, it just happened to be option A was the variation that I was showing you, but this RPL would be applicable elsewhere. And I do this inbound and I commit it. If we look back at uh, route reflector one, we're gonna see now that a lot of traffic is being forwarded out towards, that's for everything. All prefixes are going that direction. So if we go back to router 19, I do the trace route again, you're going to see that I'm now forwarding the traffic out towards XR11 and not sending it out towards router 6 via CSR5. So it affects everything because it's an eBGP peering. Now, if I was to go in and make modifications to on a per prefix basis or anything like that, I could. If I wanted to use normal BGP logic and do AS path prepending on one side versus the other, so the traffic all goes through XR11 versus CSR5, I could do that as well. The normal BGP best path selection algorithm doesn't change in this particular use case. It just how it's, instead of doing it on a per VRF basis, like we did with option A, you're affecting all routes because it's one eBGP pairing that you're modifying inbound routes for, where if you're gonna mess around with this any, in any other case, you have to just remember the best path selection algorithm. You know, what is the pre preference and the priority order of the different path attributes and how do they get affected? That's pretty much it. So at this point, the, uh, everything else that we've talked about so far is still applicable. So let's talk about what's, what's actually going on here. This is actually a, a major area of confusion that I see with a lot of people. So right now, we have the ASBRs, all ASBRs are now configured as route reflectors and they've made the local route reflectors clients of themselves. And that's how these guys are now receiving routes. They are telling their connections to the route reflectors that this is gonna be a client so this guy right here is going to receive a bunch of updates inbound from the route reflector and also receive a bunch of routes from the eBGP pairs. And that's gonna be bi-directional. So this is all gonna be propagated information. So he's a client to this guy and there's a peering here and uh, these guys are exchanging routes with each other and everything looks good there. All that stuff is still happening. Now there's still route target imports on the provider edge routers to import the, the route targets of the other side. 
So in this case here, CSR2 still has to import routes for customer one, customer two, and customer three, respectively. None of that has stopped working. And that goes for CSR2, CSR1, CSR8, and XR16. On XR routers specifically, there is still a static route on XR11 and 12 pointing to the slash 32 address of the next hop via gig 0 slash 0 slash 0 slash 2. That has not gone away, gone away either. So a lot of the same things that we configured in the option A video for VRFs, I'm sorry, the option B for VRFs, a lot of that same stuff is still in play. It cannot go away. All we are doing now is specifically focusing on the ASBR specifics. How do we allow the ASBR to receive the, the routes internally and externally and from, from the route reflectors inside of our own autonomous system as well as routes from the other ASBR in the other autonomous system? And that's the route reflector is going to allow us to do that. And that's going to be how we accomplish this. In the next video, I'm going to go in and disable the route reflector capability, just turn it off. And then we're going to turn disable the route target filter option and how that would come into play. So again, there's a lot of things that come into play that you would need to be comfortable with and understand in terms, in order for all this stuff to work the way that we want it to. So that's pretty much that. This is going to be a shorter video because of the fact that we've done a lot of the legwork already in the previous video, but it's important to understand how all that type of stuff comes into play. I probably could have broken up the VRF variation a little bit better and focused on the what you need to have working in order for it all to come together and then focus on VRF specifically. But I feel like having all the content in the same video makes it easier to understand what's going on instead of bracketing it up into separate videos. So with that being said, that's basically what you need to remember. If you have any questions on anything, feel free to give me a shout down in the comment section below. And until next time, guys, Take it easy.